now that I'm here. Physical death does not interrupt our eternal life. Lazarus! Come out! So one thing that uh, Dallas talks about a lot is bringing your loaves and fish, um, and God will kind of work out the rest. And you being from a major studio background in Hollywood, what are kind of like your loaves and fish that you feel like that you've brought to The Chosen? Um, good question. I think it's perspective. You know, it's a perspective of a co how a major studio or a big production would do things as opposed to maybe a mom and pop operation. And so it's just, it's not like I'm reinventing the wheel. It's just I'm, I'm adjusting things and giving some advice about how to adjust things to a much bigger scale than what was done in seasons one and two, which were slightly more of a mom and pop operation. And now we're a much bigger production. And so it's really just an adjustment here, an adjustment there and bringing us to scale. And the themes that like The Chosen has that resonates with a lot of believers and Christians in the world, is that something that really resonated with you personally on a personal level? Yeah, it did. I mean, look, I. I'm a, I'm a Christian. I wouldn't say I'm a devout Christian, but I'm certainly a practicing Christian. Um, for me, though, it's really just great storytelling and high-level production value. I'm a big fan of filmmakers. I've worked with filmmakers, some of the best. And so what I respond to is a filmmaker with an articulate vision who brings that to life in the best way possible. And that's what Dallas Jenkins has done with The Chosen. And that's what got me really, really excited. And that's what moves me more than anything. Um, certainly the fact that it's based on the Bible, the greatest story ever told, doesn't hurt. But if you tell that story really poorly, I'm not going to be moved. <laughs> and there's some through-line themes in other seasons, like uh, in season three, it was kind of like Jesus' healing ministry, and James is asking why he hadn't been healed yet. Are there any themes that are going to really resonate with audiences in season four? I think it's going to be that, you know, the path to the light isn't just easy. It's a hard road, even for Jesus. That's not going to be a simple straight line. I think even for Jesus and the disciples, there are challenges that they face. There is vulnerability. And I think that that's something that's going to resonate with everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And bringing your expertise into something like The Chosen, do you see a big difference between how it's run as opposed to a major production? You were saying earlier that it's not quite as different as you might think. That's right. I mean, at the end of the day, the laws of physics apply uh, no matter where you are. Um, so I'm, we're still concerned about the same things you'd be concerned on on a big budgeted Hollywood movie. You're concerned about schedule. You're concerned about the production design or working on budget. You're concerned about the actors showing up on time. You're concerned about, you know, making your day. So it's it has a lot more in common than it does having differences. With the season also, you've brought on some pretty heavy hitters from Hollywood itself. How has that been and how has that impacted the, the production and everything with that? Yeah, I think uh, we might think in the faith community that Hollywood's a dirty word. Hollywood is just shorthand for people who make their profession at just a little more sophisticated level. They have bigger budgets, they have more tools. And so as the show has grown, we've actually looked to Hollywood to say, are there people here who care about telling this story? And we found wonderful team members, some on the production side. Uh, our new head of production comes out of Hollywood. And also some of uh, my staff on the marketing side that have been marketing some of the biggest blockbuster films in the last decade are on our team. And all they're doing is really kind of elevating our game. They're helping us do this job and in a way that is sort of merits the sacrifice of the audience who's contributing their money to help support this and also those of us who are giving our loaves and fishes, as we like to call it. And Dallas has used the analogy of the loaves and fish, bringing your loaves and fish and letting God do the rest. Have you seen um, some pretty interesting results from people bringing loaves and fish on for this season and seeing how it's just grown as you've been doing production? Yeah, the idea of loaves and fish is just everyone brings their best to the table with no expectation 
that it's anything but just that, their offering. And each season we see that miraculously again and again, whether it's someone who's come to help build the set. So there were many people last year that we saw bring loaves and fishes. This year it's actually coming to us by virtue of um, some of the new cast that you're going to meet in this season that we just are so fortunate to be able to attract to the show. And I would say these relationships we've just talked about, Lionsgate and some of our new team members, I would consider kind of the loaves and fishes audience coming to help us out. You told us it would be like that with how you lived. The man of sorrows. Acquainted with grief. If you enjoy videos that follow your values like ours and you want to help us continue, uh, go to movieguide.org slash donate because we're actually a nonprofit. You may not know that, but we're working in Hollywood every day to help families have more choices that follows their values. And also subscribe right now.